State House, Lusaka. Mr. President, Article 116, Sub Article 1, and Article 117 of the Constitution of Gambia, Amendment Act No. 2 of 2016, empowers you, sir, to appoint cabinet and provincial ministers. Article 92, sub Article 2F, empowers you, Mr. President, to appoint persons as are required to perform special duties for the executive. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell the so that you don't miss any latest it news. Please you, Mr. President, to appoint cabinet ministers, provincial ministers, and senior government officials to serve in your government. Article 260 of the Constitution stipulates that all presidential appointees shall take oath of office and oath of allegiance before carrying out duties of their office. Mr. President, in front of you are the appointed cabinet ministers, provincial ministers, and senior government officials that are ready to take their oaths. These are as follows. Honorable Colin Ngovu, MP, Minister of Green Economy and Environment. Honorable Elias Mwanga, MP, Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Honorable Credo Nanjua, MP, Provincial Minister, Central Province. Honorable Robert Dihefu, MP, Provincial Minister, Northwestern Province. Mr. Bradford, Munalukupe Machila, Principal Private Secretary to the President, State House. Dr. Oliver Mubita Kalavo, Permanent Secretary, State House. Mr. John Nsimuko, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Green Economy and Environment. Mr. Jito Kayumba, Special Assistant to the President, Economic and Development Affairs, State House. Dr. Lawrence Mananyanda, Special Assistant to the President, Project Implementation and Monitoring, State House. And Dr. Roma Chilengi, COVID Advisor to the President, State House. May I therefore seek your permission, Mr. President, to proceed to administer the two oaths to the appointed cabinet ministers, provincial ministers, and senior government officials. Thank you, Mr. President. I will now administer the oath of office and oath of allegiance to the appointed. May I ask that you all have the Bible in your right hand, and you raise your hand and repeat after me as I read out the oath papers. We will start with the oath of office. Please repeat after me. I, Collins Nzovu, Having been appointed, Do swear that I will well 
and truly serve the Republic and President of Zambia that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the President and the Republic of Zambia that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of Zambia as by law established and that I will not directly or indirectly reveal or transmit any such information or matter as shall be brought under my consideration or shall be made known to me by reason of my office except as may be required in the discharge of my duties as such or with the authority of the president. So help me God. Thank you very much. The next oath to be taken is the oath of allegiance. Again, please repeat after me. I, Collins Nzovu, Do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the President of the Republic of Zambia and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of Zambia as by law established. So help me God. Thank you very much. I will now call upon the individual cabinet ministers, provincial ministers, and the senior government officials to come forward to sign both oath papers and hand them over to Mr. President for his endorsement. And I will follow the same order that we followed earlier. Honorable Collins Zobu, MP, Minister of Green Economy and Environment. Honorable Elias Mubanga, MP, Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development.
Honorable Credo Nanjua MP, Provincial Minister, Central Province. Honorable Robert Lihefu, MP, Provincial Minister, Northwestern Province. Mr. Bradford Munalukupe Machira, Principal Private Secretary to the President, State House. Dr. Oliver Mubita Kalabo, Permanent Secretary, State House.
Mr. John Msimuko, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Green Economy and Environment. Mr. Jito Kayumba, Special Assistant to the President, Economic and Development Affairs, State House. Dr. Lawrence Mwananyanda, Special Assistant to the President, Project Implementation and Monitoring, State House. Last but not the least, Dr. Roma Chilengi, COVID advisor to the President, State House. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It is now my honor and privilege to invite you, sir, to address the newly sworn in cabinet ministers, provincial ministers, and senior government officials 
and the nation at large. Mr. President, sir. Thank you very much. Once more, good morning. Um, Your Honor, the Vice President, Republican Vice President of Zambia, um, Madam Mutalena Rumango, colleagues in the UPND, the Penny, and Alliance Partners. Honorable Ministers, Cabinet Ministers, I mean, and Provincial Ministers, Secretary to the Cabinet, and your Deputies, Permanent Secretaries, other Senior Government Officials, Distinguished Invited Guests, Colleagues from the Fourth Estate, Members of the Press, Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have much to say today because the sermons I've given in the past in this place, in the room up there, at the inauguration ceremony at the Seattle Stadium, official opening of Parliament. And lately, early this week, at a workshop to induct cabinet and provincial ministers, we have outlined the issues, our approach to public affairs management, I mean our policies, of course driven from the mission, vision, and our responsibilities as individual members of the UPND government, UPND leadership for service government. I choose to clarify it that way. UPND leadership for service. We have also talked about the importance of teamwork towards achieving a common agenda, serving the people of Zambia better all the time, subjecting our personal interests to the interests of the greater majority of the people of Zambia. This occasion is no different. So I congratulate you, ministers, cabinet ministers, provincial ministers, permanent secretaries, advisors to the presidency. You will see a change. I think you are already noticing it if you are observant that we are creating clusters of advisors in the presidency that will bring combined skills individual but combined skills to function so that this house functions to serve the people. This, your state house, works with cabinet office, works with the Minister of Finance and other ministries and departments and local government to deliver and only to deliver for the people. So I've said enough, Madam Vice President. So the theme is the same. The emphasis may be different, but the theme is the same. To work for the people. So congratulations once more. 
Let's get on with the job. The job of serving the people. As a new leadership for service, we ought to know that the reason government changed, the people decided for change, is to deliver change. Anchored on the improved economy to make food available for our people. Jobs, business opportunities, health services. That is why particularly we are very pleased today, Madam Vice President, that we have an advisor to deal with the coronavirus pandemic, to bring that pandemic within the challenges that we face under control. Without bringing it under control, it will be very difficult to achieve the agenda of reconstructing the economy because COVID will stand in our way. And as we go to New York for the U.S. to do help this country and other African countries, poor countries, to bring it under control will be top on our agenda. And the coronavirus advisor will be required to play a critical role from yesterday so that we have a successful mission around this subject and we can come back home with more support given our local limitations to save the lives of our people. I chose to pick on him because it's a circumstantial appointment because of the coronavirus situation. And I want to urge our people not to relent, not to push for relaxation of the coronavirus control measures, mitigation measures. Because if they do, the fourth wave will catch us in a weaker position and will lose lives. We do not wish to see that. So the presidency will provide direct leadership support to the advisor, COVID-19, to the ministries, Ministry of Health in particular, and other frontline worker housing ministries, teachers, those that interact with the people. We've got to have a program for markets, Mr. Advisor, public places where food is sold and bought, protect lives. State House is not a master of everything. State House is a, is a unit to make things happen. It's what our constitution allows an executive president that should be accountable to people but must deliver for the people. And you as a team in State House must do just that. Relate well with your colleagues in other ministries. You're not the masters. I've seen this too often. The people in State House begin to behave like they are masters in their own right. No. We're servants. And cabinet ministers, you were at a workshop. You heard my message. Secretary of the Cabinet, sir, I would like us to move from these ceremonies only but simultaneously begin to implement the policies and the measures that will benefit the people. What are these measures? For example, procurement. Two rules, three rules. Buy at the right cost, price. Two, I'm repeating, two, because I've said it before. Two, the quality must be right. Three, Anything we do must be delivered on time. The ministers that are here, permanent secretary, cabinet, of, sorry, um, state house, permanent secretary, green economy and environment, it's a new ministry. 
Minister Small and Medium Scale Enterprises. It's a new ministry. Start on a clean slate. Let us revise the tender processes and procedures that lead us to wastage of people's resources. The next time I stand here, I will expect a brief that I will share with the public on the measures we have taken to control tenderpreneurs who sit in government ministries, either as minister, PS, or director. All they do is chase tenders and give themselves tenders at a high price. I want to announce to the public, Secretary of the Cabinet, Vice President, specific tracked measures and the possible projections of savings. I have my own idea. You know I love numbers. I have my own ideas. I have my own projections. Because I've looked at only a few issues. Sure. Fertilizer. Fertilizer, Madam Vice President. Your officials in these governments that have gone before were buying fertilizer at $1,200 per ton, when at that price the price of fertilizer was $450 per ton. Just imagine what that means, the wastage. Yes, the price of fertilizer has gone up a little bit. Indeed. Please take your seats. Take your seats. Take your seats. Thank you very much. I'm aware some colleagues may have conditions. Madam Vice President, I'm talking about walking, not to wait for these ceremonies every week, but to move in right away to effect prudence cost control measures. Because every day we don't do it, the taxpayers are losing money and impairing our capability to create jobs for the youth. So immediately, Madam, Your Honor, and Secretary of the Cabinet, Ministers, as I come back from New York, I would like to find specific tracked measures that will help made to adjust the procurement processes to allow these three principles to apply. I think that's fair. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't think I'm asking for too much. No. That's a bare minimum. Starting with status here. Right here. Right here. Permanent Secretary. Right here. This live by example, we in these grounds. I want to end by thanking Parliament for approving our suggested restructuring of ministries, creation of new ministries. Leader of government business in the House, Republican Vice President, Your Honor, please thank Parliament on our behalf for accelerating that decision and that should become the norm to drive decisions that help the people quickly so people can start seeing benefits. So please thank you for your leadership of the House, government business in the House. Thank the Speaker and her team. I guess for today, I have said enough. Let's implement. Let's not make this a song. Let's implement. I thank you all.
for giving me time to deliver this message. God bless. Thank you, Mr. President. This marks the end of the swearing-in ceremony for today. We shall close with the national anthem, and thereafter, Mr. President may have a photo session with the just sworn in ministers and senior government officials. Thank you.